A-L-M. Welcome back to our Pamela's Pro Workout video series, where we take a closer look at the more unique and powerful features of the Pam Pro. Today, we'll explore several more exciting uses for external CV modulation, making use of the freely assignable CV inputs to modulate parameters and unlock new and exciting functions. Let's take a look at some of the possibilities of external CV modulation. One simple but interesting way to use freely assignable CV inputs is to create a single macro modulation depth control for multiple outputs at once. To start, let's patch modulation signals from the top four outputs of PAM to various CV inputs of a Chemi's castle. We'll enter the extended parameters of output 1 and assign CV1 to the level by reducing the percentage beyond 0. Let's use the next out shortcut to quickly assign CV1 to level for the remaining outputs along the top row. With CV assigned, let's switch the TASM O to LFO mode and patch its triangle wave output to CV1. Immediately, the levels of our four modulation outputs are increased together, morphing to the sound of the castle voice from simple to complex. Changing the speed of the TASM O creates unique shifts in its interaction with the modulation. Let's unpatch the TASM O and switch to manual control over the modulation depth. We'll reassign CV7 from the Axon 2 to control the levels of the top four outputs. The topmost offset control normalised to CV7 now functions as a modulation depth control for the outputs. Assigning macro control from a CV input to multiple outputs or parameters works great for live performance or adding variation and complexity to modulation sources. Continuing to make use of hands-on controls, let's set up a probabilistic crossfader for controlling drum hits. We'll start by patching output 1 to trigger a rim shot on the squid. Let's increase the modifier to times 4, then assign the topmost offset from the Axon 2 to control the probability of the output firing. Now as the offset is increased, the overall number of triggers increases from 0 to 100%.
Let's trigger a hi-hat sound from output 2. We'll set output 2 exactly like output 1, assigning the same offset to control its probability. As the offset is increased, the relative trigger density for both outputs increases together. Instead of grouping them, let's create a crossfader that decreases the probability of one sound triggering as the others increases. To do so, let's return to output 1 and enter the digital offset and attenuation page by selecting the CV assignment and holding the encoder. We'll effectively invert the axon's control for this assignment by increasing the digital offset amount and inverting the attenuation setting. Now as the control is increased, the density of our rim shot decreases proportionally to the hi-hat's increase. Let's create another crossfader to control two more sounds from outputs 3 and 4. This time each output includes a Euclidean pattern, producing a rhythm when the probability is set to 100%. Like before, we'll assign an offset from the axon 2 to control probability. We'll do the same for output 4. Again, we'll return to output 3 and invert the CV assignment to create our second crossfader. As before, centering the axon's offset produces a 50-50 chance of both sounds playing. Each output's Euclidean pattern is preserved at each end of the crossfader. We now have a pair of performable crossfaders that combine to control four different drum sounds. This efficient hands-on approach allows for quick variations to the sounds whilst maintaining a consistent density to the beat. Of course, we can also add automatic variations to the beat with modulation. Let's patch the Quaid Mega Slope in sequencer mode to control the topmost crossfader. The inclusion of digital offset and attenuation for each of PAM's CV assignments allows highly flexible and specific functionality to be set up, unlocking much more exciting possibilities for external CV control. In this final patch, we'll make use of assignable CV to add 303 style slides, accents and holds to a simple bass voice patch. Starting with a looped random voltage controlling the pitch, let's use the slew parameter to add slides between notes.
Rather than a fixed slide, let's assign CV1 to control the slew amount. We'll patch a looped Euclidean gate pattern from output 3 back to modulate CV1. Now only a small number of notes include slides when output 3 goes high. A simple decay envelope is produced from output 2 and patched to control both the filter cutoff and VCA level of the voice. Let's use the same CV from output 3 to add an accent to the envelope output whenever a slide occurs. To do so, we'll assign CV1 to control the output level. Let's use the built-in offset to set the base level of the envelope. For further expressivity, let's add holds by assigning CV2 to control the offset parameter. We'll patch another loop to Euclidean gate pattern from output 4 to modulate CV2. Let's lower the hold level using the built-in attenuation. Returning to the scope, we can now see the far more expressive envelope the results from our CV modulation. Using PAM's freely assignable CV inputs, subtle but very musical modulation can be introduced to add character and expression to any type of signal. Thanks for watching this closer look at some of the many ways to use external CV with PAMLA's Pro Workout. Of course, possibilities are truly endless with freely assignable CV inputs. Try experimenting with hands-on control or using external CV modulation to unlock new and exciting uses for the PAM Pro. For more information on PAMLA's Pro Workout and the rest of the ALM line, please visit busycircuits.com.